Governor Phil Scott, thank you for joining us. Oh, well, thanks for having me on. You got it. So let's begin with the Affordable Heat Act. Both chambers vote to override your veto. Your response to that? Yeah, I was uh, obviously uh, disappointed with the outcome, um, but I, uh, I feel great about what we've been able to communicate to Vermonters and and uh, for those Vermonters who feel as though they've been ignored, the thousands who called in, called their legislators and so forth, I just want to reassure them that we are going to be keeping them updated and informed as to the, what's going on with the Public Utility Commission over the next uh, year to two years so, so that they are fully informed before it comes back uh, into uh, full view. With Democrats holding a super majority governor, is it almost pointless to veto? Why do it? Well, we did have three Democrats that went with us. It was a close vote in the in the Senate. We needed 11. We we got 10, and uh, three Democrats uh, came uh, to our aid. Um, it would have only taken one more vote. So uh, we're not going to give up. Uh, there are going to be another, uh, quite a few other bills that uh, that could be vetoed um, and as I said before we need to look at the aggregate of what they're doing but what I've seen so far leads me to believe that we're on the wrong path and we're in for a collision course at this point. One of those bills perhaps Vermont's decades old bottle deposit law could get a big makeover. Lawmakers approved an expansion of the types of beverage containers for which you'll pay a deposit up front and need to return for a cash refund. Will you support that? Yeah, I have not been supportive of the, the bottle bill uh, ever since they started the discussion. Uh, I truly believe, and I felt this way when I was in the Senate, uh, that if we wanted to make uh, improvements, uh, we should work on recycling. We've done that. Single sort recycling is is something that uh, has proved worthwhile, and we need to commit to trying to do that better. Um, to take this Rube Goldberg approach and and uh, and trying to expand the bottle bill just makes no sense to me whatsoever. So, will you veto it? Um, again, I'm going to look at everything in the aggregate, but um, but it's uh, it's on the list. The back and forth continues between the chambers to find a funding source for child care. House lawmakers want to fund a $150 million plan with personal and corporate income taxes. The Senate prefers a payroll tax split between employees and employers. Could you go along with either? I, I prefer and uh, will continue to advocate for no taxes. Um, there is a path forward, uh, as I said to my inaugural address and budget address, uh, that uh, the $56 million that we're put, putting forth uh, would put us as tied for the most generous child care provision in the country. Right now, as a reminder, we are number two. If we did nothing today, we are number two in the nation in terms of uh, in the generosity of our, our um, child care provisions. So if either of these proposals with taxes come to your desk, will you veto one of those? Um, I vetoed budgets in the past uh, that have uh, included uh, fees and, and tax increases and and I don't see where I would do anything different this time. New gun rules passed that include a 72 hour waiting period to purchase a gun. Will you sign that bill into law? There's two thirds of that uh, that I uh, am in agreement with. They've come to a good place in terms of the red flag uh, provisions and the, the safe storage. Uh, but the, the 72 hour waiting period, I don't believe is constitutional. I have concerns about that. I took an oath to uphold the, the Constitution. Uh, so we'll see. I have made a, a decision on that. But, um, but it is on that list that I talked about before. A potential veto. Yes. As we told you at the top of the broadcast, a deal on funding child care with payroll taxes. And again, as you heard, the governor said he doesn't like it. My conversation with the governor continues tomorrow night right here on the Channel 3 News at 6. Lots more to get to the housing crunch, homelessness, drugs and more tomorrow night.